Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, the team has begun phase one of their offseason activities, plus a big-time contract extension was signed by one of my favorite quarterbacks in the NFL. Also, another approach to consider when it comes to this team building a competitive roster for the long haul. Your calls and texts will close out the show. It's all coming up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, April 18th, 2023. Just win. Welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show the first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it's available. If you're checking us out on YouTube, that's because of my guy Ari. So we definitely appreciate you checking us out for a minute, 31 minutes, 35 minutes, whatever the case may be. We definitely appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, letting you letting us know how you feel about the show. And again, shouting out my man Ari at Ari Produces on Twitter, who makes sure we're up on YouTube each and every day. Let's go ahead and jump into the news in notes of the day and let's start with the offseason workouts uh, going on at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center. Uh, the Raiders started that on Monday, April 17th and something I should have talked about on Monday's show. I just didn't. I kind of let it slip my mind a little bit coming off the weekend and coming off the NBA playoffs and all that other good stuff. Really kind of let the offseason workouts kind of slip my mind and this is just phase one. It goes on for two weeks and it's really just meetings, strength and conditioning, physical rehab. There's no football activities going on but it is kind of cool to get the meetings, get the strength and conditioning, just getting the guys back around each other now remember it's just it's not a mandatory so you know you you can show up if you want to you don't have to of course this staff is going to want to see as many guys as possible in the building but uh yeah just to see guys getting back to it and getting back in the building on Monday uh, was really cool and the thing about it is with this staff and some teams are different across the league they don't allow us the media being there so I'm not going to be able to go in there talk to players ask them how it was like being back talk to coaches and all that good stuff they don't really worry about the offseason activities at least phase one phase two you know those early ones they don't let us in there so there's nothing that I can report about what I saw who showed up how much attendance was there guys like Vinny Bonsignor he'll probably talk to somebody in the building and they'll say oh yeah there was 75 percentage 80 percent 90 percent whatever but again it's just voluntary it's meetings strength and conditioning and physical rehab and that's what phase one is all about for the first two weeks one guy that wasn't there and is not allowed to be there is running back Josh Jacobs. He has not signed his franchise tag deal yet. So uh, until he has a contract actually signed, he can't be there because he's a, a free agent and he's not under contract. So uh, even if he wanted to be there, which I'm sure he doesn't, uh, he wasn't. And he's not going to be until he gets that contract uh, signed, at least that franchise tag deal signed. And of course, he wants the long-term deal. The team has till July 15th to actually get that long-term deal done. I don't know what you know a realistic contract would look like for Josh Jacobs I just really don't uh, you know how they treat running backs in the league uh, Josh Jacobs if you go back and look at the carries that he had in 2022 340 carries and 53 catches out of the backfield so that's almost 400 touches he had for a running back that was the most that he had ever had in his career so even though the Raiders didn't pick up his fifth year option even though they went and drafted two running backs in Zamir White and, and Britton Brown it was all the Josh Jacobs show. And even early in the season, you know, it looked like they weren't really sure if they should go and use Josh Jacobs heavily. Well, they eventually did, right, to the tune of 340 carries and 53 catches. That is a lot of work. His previous career high was 270. So that's not even close. So, I mean, you can say what you want to say about the staff and not picking up his fifth-year option. Part of that not picking up the fifth-year option fueled Josh Jacobs to play all 17 games. Part of drafting two running backs – fuel Josh Jacobs to play all 17 games. So uh, if nobody else, Josh Jacobs should thank the staff and thank Zamir White and, and Britton Brown for being there because, look, it did, made him determined to play all, all season long and really be the best version of himself to the point where he's gotten a, a $2 million contract, not contract extension, but $2 million raise off of what the fifth-year option would have been. Think about it. The fifth-year option would have been $8 million. The franchise tag for a running back is $10 million. So even if he has to play on that, which I know he doesn't want to, if he does have to play on that, that's still a raise off of what he would have got if they had given him that fifth-year option. So uh, hopefully, I'm hoping that Josh Jacobs gets a long-term deal done. Uh, the date to circle on your calendar is July 15th. That's when they've got to get a long-term deal done by. If not, 
he'll be forced to play on the franchise tag or sit out. I don't think he'll do that. I don't think that he'll skip training camp and skip everything and not show up till week 10 so he can get credit for a, you know, a season. I don't, I just I don't see J- Josh Jacobs being that guy, but I also can't control what a person feels and how they feel about their money and how they feel about their contract. That's something that they got to work out. Their agents got to work out and the team's got to work out. But remember the date, July 15th, put that on your calendar. That's when they've got to get a long-term deal done by, or else it's going to be a one year, $10 million franchise tag for one Josh Jacobs. One guy who doesn't have to worry about a franchise tag for quite a while is Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts. And anyone who's been listening to the show for a long time knows I'm a big fan of Jalen Hurts, was a big fan when he was at Alabama. Uh, Then he got benched for Tua, eventually ended up going on to Oklahoma, uh, had success obviously at both places, did really well at Alabama, uh, just wasn't the best passer. Right. But you could see that he was he was a guy that had a work ethic. He wanted to win. He was a winner. Right. And, And he didn't pout and take his ball and go home when he got benched for Tua. All he did is stay ready. Alabama said, hey, Jalen, we need you. He got back in the game, and he helped him win games. He went on to Oklahoma, was a Heisman Trophy finalist, and you know didn't win the Heisman Trophy, but still did some really good things at Oklahoma. Turned into a second-round pick in 2020, number 53 overall, and on Monday signed a five-year, $255 million extension, including $179.304 million guaranteed. Big-time money. For Jalen Hurts. So round of applause for that young man, a guy that even heading into the 2022 season, the Eagles, like the front office, the coaching staff, they were questioning Jalen Hurts. Is he that guy? Well, all he did is use that strong work ethic. One of the main reasons that I was a big fan of him is because I knew he'd put in the work like that when he got to the league. That strong work ethic, he helped lead the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Now they didn't win it, but he got there. Right. And if he hadn't missed a few games, he probably would have been a lot closer to Patrick Mahomes in the MVP race. Now, Mahomes probably would have ended up winning it at the end of the day, but he would have been a lot closer. And I'm just so happy for Jalen Hurts. Again, he had so many questions coming out of college. People saying he can't throw the ball. He turns the ball over. He's this, that and the other. He got benched for Tua. And well, all I know is he's already had a better career than Tua. Right. And especially uh, talking about injuries. Right. He hasn't been banged up like Tua and I don't root for injuries for anybody. I like Tua, but I had a lot of questions about him coming out of school just because he was already banged up when he was at Alabama. But man, a second round pick in 2020, number 53 overall signs that five year, two hundred fifty five million dollar extension, hundred and seventy nine point three million guaranteed. And well, in 2020, what did the Raiders do in 2020? They had two first round picks. Henry Ruggs went number 12, no longer in the league. Damon Arnett went number 19, no longer in the league. Ruggs, I think, was a good pick. Ruggs was working out. Obviously, we know what happened with that. That was just a bad situation uh, for him. So he's out of the league. Damon Arnett, just an all-around bad pick. Just terrible pick, terrible guy. Uh, You know, he just, he's he's just, there was way too many red flags, and Mike Mayock and John Gruden still decided to pull the trigger on him, and it obviously did not work. The Raiders didn't have any second-round picks, and then when they picked in round three, Jalen Hurts was already off the board. Man, I wish... They had picked Jalen Hurts at number 19 overall. I'm not saying he'd be the same guy today that that he is for the Eagles right now. Uh, obviously, the situation would have been different with the silver and black, but I still think he would have had a chance, and I know his work ethic would have remained the same. So I do feel confident that he would have put in the work to continue to get better, better, better. Who knows what it would have you know turned into, but it'd be better than the situation that the Raiders are in right now, wondering who their future quarterback is going to be of the franchise. Jimmy G is in place right now, but does that mean he's going to be the long haul? No. The long haul, well, is still to be determined. We don't know who that's going to be. One guy that I talked about quite a bit on Monday's show was Anthony Richardson, the quarterback out of Florida. Can he be this year's Jalen Hurts? He's got the work ethic. He knows what he's got to work on. I talked about his piece in the Players' Tribune, playertribune.com. I encourage you to go check it out if you haven't. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. He makes me root for him, right? And, and I was a guy that definitely was not a, a firm believer in Anthony Richardson until I, until I started doing some, some research and talking to people that cover him like a glove that said, wait, Q, you got you know, you to really uh, listen to this guy. You got to check him out. This dude's really got it between the ears. Uh, he's got a strong work ethic. And you know, just everything that I've been reading, hearing, and even seeing when I saw him at the Combine, it was like, okay, I, I think that this guy's got a little something, something. Who knows? Because he only has 13 career starts in college, Jalen Hurts clearly had a lot more starts than that. So the experience for Jalen was there where the experience for Anthony Richardson is not there. But, man, again, I go over just that piece in the Players' Tribune, and I look at it, and there's so many different like little paragraphs I could point out that makes me think, this dude, he's going to end up being the guy. Is he going to be a Jalen Hurts? Is he going to be a guy for three or four years from now? We're talking about a big-time contract extension that he signs. 
I don't know. But if you missed Monday's show and you didn't get to hear me talk about his work ethic, I'm just going to read that part real quick and the way he closed out his piece on the Players' Tribune. He says, yeah, I may not pay attention to all the noise, but I do hear the critics. I know the things people are picking apart. People talk about whether I can be accurate. They say I don't have touch. They say I can't throw short. They say a lot of things. All I got to say is watch how hard I work. In my mind, I can do anything with the football in my hand. But I know that no one will ever work harder than me to improve. Whether that's my footwork, accuracy, mechanics, learning defenses, you name it. You can always grow, and that's what I'm focused on. I'm going to come in and be tireless. I'm going to put it all on the line. My family sacrificed too much for me not to give everything to this game. So that was the part on the work ethic, which you know, anyone who knows me knows that I'm sold on someone with the work ethic. If you're going to bust your tail, man, I'll go to bat for you. I might be wrong. You, you know, it just sometimes the talent just isn't there, right? Talent is, is you can work as hard as you want, and the talent isn't there to get it done. But I believe in someone who I know is going to give me 100%, if not more, all the time than someone who I think is talented that's going to, you know, half-ass it. Let's put it like that. So he closes out the piece on the Players' Tribune talking about, so to all the coaches and GMs who are reading this, see you at the draft. If you call the name Anthony Richardson, I promise you that you won't regret it. I love it. I love it. I, again, like I said on Monday's show, I root for that guy. I hope that wherever he goes, whoever selects him, he ends up having a great career. And I hope that, you know, a couple of seasons from now, I'm talking about him signing a massive contract extension and the way that he's all of a sudden taking the league by storm. I really, really do. Coming up in segment number two, could the Raiders take the build the team approach a little bit different? Then what we've been talking about on the show, what do I mean by that? Well, I'll break it down coming up in segment number two after I tell you about FanDuel. And right now, if you're checking out the action on the diamond, you're seeing grand slams, you're seeing no hitters, you're seeing double plays. There's no better place to get on the Major League Baseball action than FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars go to fanduel.com slash locked on sign up place your first bet and get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if you don't win you can place bets on who's going to hit a home run you can do in-game betting you can talk about stolen bases you know they made the bases bigger now right so they're trying to encourage people to steal bases i'm a ricky henderson fan ricky henderson was stealing bases when they were regular size they didn't have to inflate them for him to steal bases but yeah that's just me being salty that's fine but uh they have those as well who's going to steal the most bases who's going to lead the league in bases you can check it out it's all available on FanDuel. Don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to talk about another approach that the Raiders could be taking as they're trying to build this team, not for a success for one year, but for the long haul, right? Dave Ziegler, Champ Kelly, Josh McDaniels, Patrick Graham, whoever the case may be, are trying to put this team together so they can have the long term success something that Raider Nation deserves not the just the players but the fan base deserves the long-term success more than anyone right you don't want to have the one year oh you make the playoffs one year then you go another five or six without the fan base is too passionate and 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 believes in the silver and black way too much to keep happen having that happen so the job of the front office is to build this this team and this roster so they can be competitive each and every year, even in the AFC West, which we know is a dog with Kansas City at the top. The Chargers are going to be really good as long as they got Herbert. I think Sean Payton and the Broncos will get better. And of course, the Raiders as well. It's a very competitive division, but it's not a division why the Raiders shouldn't be competitive each and every year and competing for the AFC West title. It's about time someone else in the division knocks off Kansas City and, and starts taking the division title instead of letting them cakewalk each and every year. Even the years that we think, oh, this is going to be the year, it ends up not being the year like 2022. So it's funny how this whole subject came up, and sometimes this is just how it happens. So on Friday last week, me and Damon were talking on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Necessary Roughness, and we had a texter uh, text in and said, hey, would you guys mind if the Raiders went into the draft and made 12 picks and everybody was a bust except for one guy, he turned into a, a Hall of Famer? Would that still be considered a bad draft? And I said off top, like, yes. The Raiders have too many holes. The Raiders can't just, you know, get one guy right who, yeah, turns into a Hall of Famer. That's great. But the other 11 guys, if they went and selected 12, all ended up being busts or just very average players and they don't really contribute. Yeah, they have too many holes. that They don't have a strong enough roster for that to happen. And I remember DeMond brought up someone like Aaron Donald. I said, yeah, that's fine. Aaron Donald uh, turned in to be that, you know, that great player for the Rams. And, you know, the rest of their draft wasn't very good, but they already had really good players on the team. So we went back and forth. And then we brought Vinny Bonsignor in on the conversation. And he agreed with me and said no. And my one little asterisk was, 
Well, I guess if it was a quarterback, it might be a little bit different only because the quarterback is such a, a important position. But still, with that being said, the Raiders need so many players that I wouldn't even be happy if you just went and got one Hall of Fame type quarterback and then you still have a, a team, especially the defense, that wasn't worth the salt because, well, then that quarterback better be super, super special. So that was on Friday, right? We had a nice little debate, a little back and forth. Then on Monday, I'm driving home from the radio station. I'm on the 215, and one, the 215 was backed up. Nothing but traffic. For some reason at that time, it was like just bumper to bumper stop. There was no go. It was just stop. So Vinny started texting me about, you know, about the same conversation. He said, you know, I should have said that a quarterback would have changed the conversation a little bit. So we went back to this conversation while I was in traffic on uh, on Monday, but we were having the conversation on Friday. So it was pretty funny how it happened. So me and Vinny are going back and forth. And of course, I'm being safe. I'm using voice text. I'm not texting myself because, well, we don't do that. We want to make sure we're safe when we're driving. I encourage anyone who's texting and on the road, make sure you're using the, the voice the voice activated text and not, you know, trying to text with your phone. Don't put anyone else in danger. Matter of fact, there was a fat accident on the 215 is why uh, the traffic was so stop. And like I said, no go. But getting back to the conversation, the whole point is Vinny hit me uh, with a text and he said uh, he, he gave me all of the, the picks that were selected when Patrick Mahomes was selected. So that was like where we got to because he said, well, you know, the quarterback is – the most important guy. And in that draft, when the Chiefs went up to get Patrick Mahomes, it was Patrick Mahomes at number 10. Obviously, we know how that worked. At number 59, Tano Kapasongon, defensive end from Villanova. Don't know who that is. Number 86 was Kareem Hunt, running back out of Toledo. He's no longer even with Kansas City. Number 39, Jehu, Jehu Chason, uh, wide receiver out of Michigan. Not familiar with him. Number 183, uh, Yukame Aligwe, linebacker from Georgia Southern. They, I know what they did do. They decided to go with the toughest saying names possible just for the sake of this conversation. Then at number 218, Leon McQuay, safety out of USC. So really, the only player that was ended up being great was Patrick Mahomes. And Kareem Hunt's a good running back, but he's a running back. And we know how running backs don't get respected in the NFL. So my counter argument was, yeah, but the Chiefs were already built up when – they went and made that move for Patrick Mahomes. They already were a team that was consistently making the playoffs. And then they went to the draft and got Patrick Mahomes and figured that could be the guy that got him over the hump. So remember, they had Alex Smith and they were already winning the division. So they were making the playoffs consistently, but they didn't have enough firepower. They weren't a good enough team to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes gets in his first year and he doesn't you know, get into action until late in the season, and then you start to see who he can be. And then all of a sudden, they trade Alex Smith to, to Washington, and it's the Patrick Mahomes show. And, well, it's, you know, the rest is history. We already know how that shakes out. So that got me thinking, and I hit Vinny with, well, that could be an approach that the Raiders are taking. Maybe they take these 12 draft picks this year and really work on building the team. They have Jimmy G already in place. Not that I'm a, a believer that he's going to play all 17 games. They have Brian Hoyer as the backup quarterback. I'm sure they're going to draft somebody in the draft, whether it's early or late, but not guaranteeing that that's going to be the guy. But maybe they take that approach of, okay, what we need to do is build this team so it's a real solid team. It could be competitive. And just like on Monday's show, I had a call from someone asking about, you know, if the if Jimmy G stays healthy all season, could this be a team that could uh, make it to the playoffs? And I said, well, yeah, sure. They can win nine or ten games just with the strength of the offense, but the defense has got to be better. So just imagine that Jimmy G does stay healthy all season long. The offense, we know, has got an opportunity to be special. And then the defense has a nice little uptick because they dedicated a lot of the draft capital to the defensive side of things. Okay, so now you're looking and saying, all right, we don't have our quarterback of the future yet. Like, if you're the Raiders, that's what you're saying. We don't have that franchise guy yet. Now we can go into the 2024 draft and really do whatever it takes to go get the dude, right? We can do like Kansas City, who traded up from 27, all the way from 27 to number 10 to go get Patrick Mahomes. And we're talking about all the time here on the show trading up to three or, you know, trading back just a little bit. And do you know how massive of a jump that is going from 27 to 10? That is big time. And Kansas City did it because they targeted Patrick Mahomes. So is that an approach that we may see start to be executed come next Thursday for in Kansas City, right? Maybe they start to say, hey, we've got 12 draft picks. Let's go get the best players available. Let's build this team so we're solid offensively and defensively. And if we don't get our quarterback of the future, that's okay. Because we could dip back into the draft next year, not give up our first round draft pick, not, you know, give up a bunch of a capital to move up to get a guy that we may not be 100%, you know, in, in love with. 
We all know that they tried to move up to the number one spot. They didn't get that. Carolina got it from Chicago. So clearly they saw at least one guy that they were big time believers in. And I think that was Bryce Young, similar to what I think Houston is in, in love with Bryce Young, but they're not going to get an opportunity to get him. Matter of fact, Bryce Young, he's not even taking visits with teams anymore. So if that doesn't tell you that he's going to be the number one dude, I don't know what does. I mean, literally, when you stop taking visits with teams, that let it be known, like, I don't need to anymore. This team at number one plans on taking me. So I, Houston might pass on C.J. Stroud. And if the Raiders are, you know, into C.J. Stroud, maybe they make a move, but maybe they don't. Maybe they just sit there at number seven. And whether you're a, a corner guy, whether you're an edge guy, whether you're a defensive tackle guy, whatever the case may be, whether you're an offensive line person, you know, whatever the case, maybe they start to do that and just literally get the best players available to build the depth of the team. Offensive line, I know that they help, you know, the, the number one running back in the league in 2022, but they still need to be addressed. That right tackle position needs to be solidified. I like Jermaine Illuminor. I like what he brings to the table, but I think we all know he needs some work and that needs to be upgraded as well. He's serviceable. I don't think he's a starting right tackle in the NFL, but that's just me. You know, and then obviously the defense has got to get a massive uptick. They've got to be improved in all elements of the defense, interior, edge, linebacker, safety, corners, all of it needs to be upgraded. So maybe that's the approach they take. Maybe they say, let's get this team solid and then worry about who our future quarterback is going to be, especially if they have the job security and know that they're not on, under pressure to get it done this year. As long as they see this thing being built correctly and, and what they feel like is correctly in their eyes, they'll have the time to build it. I could totally see that being you know, a way that they go. And it's funny because, again, this whole conversation came from me sitting in traffic and me and Vinny just going back and forth, exchanging ideas uh, through text message. And I told him at the end of the conversation, I was like, dude, I think I'm going to talk about this on the podcast. So, I mean, again, you just never know how these conversations come about, but it's something to think about. And really, I think it's something to highly consider as the draft is less than 10 days away now. That could be the approach that the, take, the, the Raiders, Dave Ziegler and company take. Just build the team and then worry about who your future quarterback is going to be much later. 707-654-4693. That's the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line. Your calls and texts are coming up next to close out the show. This is the Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Your calls and texts. You have that Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line. 707-654-4693. We'll try to get in as many as possible, as quick as possible, because uh, I know we got a lot of good uh, feedback, so I want to get in as much as possible. Let's start off with a text today from Joby One Kenobi in Arlington, Texas. Uh, it's been a minute since we heard from him. He says, stay away from all quarterbacks in this year's draft, unless it's Richardson. He can learn for a year or two before taking over. Any other quarterback will want to start right away. We have to go defense. Carter is a must if there. I understand the risk. We could get him a babysitter if that's what a grown man needs to stay out of trouble, I guess. Defense, defense, defense. Next year, go all in for a top quarterback. Whatever it takes to get the top quarterback. Two number ones, maybe three number ones. What would you give up for the top quarterback next year? That's Joby Wan Kenobi in Arlington, Texas. And it's so funny that he sends that text in after what we just talked about in segment number two, right? I mean, that had nothing to do with segment number two, but he's thinking along the same lines, like build up the defense, build up the defense, build up the defense, and maybe the Raiders go all in for whatever quarterback they're eyeing coming up next season. And I don't, I don't know what it would take to give, get up to that number of spot, you know, whatever. It's the number one, number two. You know, we know Caleb Williams. We know Drake May are the top two right now for next year, but – uh, by the end of the college football season next year, there's going to be a couple other guys that are all of a sudden on the radar, and people are like, hey, watch out for that guy. That might be the best you know, quarterback in the mix. And think about this. Anthony Richardson at one time was considered a, a second-round pick, a late second-round pick. You know, okay, he's not going to be available. Uh, you know, he, he ain't going to be a first-round pick. Now all of a sudden he's talking about like a top-five pick. So there's that to think about. But, you know, that is a, a, an approach that the Raiders could take, Joby Wan Kenobi. I definitely appreciate it that text and uh, again it's going to be interesting to see exactly the approach the Raiders take starting on the 27th uh, next got a call from Speedy from Live Oaks Cali he's calling to ask a draft question and really focuses in on the quarterback position here he is Speedy you this is Speedy 530 from Live Oaks California hey so real quick so do you think the guru Mel Papa Jr. is going to make us he's saying we're going to get Weatherspoon, that's cool, but if number six, but if um, Anthony Richardson is still there at seven, and Weatherspoon and Gonzalez, and um, and what the Jalen Chart, the guy, whatever, I forgot his name. My story short, 
is it better to get a QB in the first round? or get the defense. But think about it. You already know how our coach is, Mr. You know, and uh, do you think we can double dip QBs? Because I don't even, I don't even remember the last time we had a Q, uh, backup QB win a game. Mariota couldn't do it. E.J. Manning couldn't do it. Matt McGloin couldn't do it. Like we couldn't win no games. So is it better to get like a, a, a another a double dip QBs? Because Brian Hoyer, all respect to the man, but I don't think he can get it done. So what do you think? Should we double dip QBs, or should we just ride who we have with Jimmy G, Hoyer, and, and Barbers? Let me know what you think, too. Other than that, hopefully uh, Josh Jacobs sticks with the team, and if not, we have we have Zemir Wyatt. It's all good. Uh, keep it going. Keep pushing. All right, Hugh. Raider Nation, out. Thank you so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you, and I see it as a possibility the Raiders could double dip. You know, just because they have so much draft capital. So, you know, most people will be like, wait, why would they double dip on the quarterback position? If they choose to get a quarterback early, you know, say they get one at, at seven or they, yeah, I'd say, I'd say they did one fell at seven and they went and got one. I can see them taking another quarterback, you know, later in, in the draft, like round four, round five, if a guy that they like or are intrigued by is there. And then all of a sudden you've got, you know, a plethora of quarterbacks, right? I mean, right now you have Chase Garbers. He, I look at him as a practice squad guy. You have Brian Hoyer, but you kind of know who he is. Jimmy G, you know who he is. So if you go and you draft someone early, okay, that's the guy that you plan on, you know, potentially being the franchise quarterback of the future. Then you have another guy. Maybe that's another guy you put on the practice squad, right? And you just see if he can develop into something. And, you know, you hope that a guy uh, doesn't get, get plucked off the practice squad. Or you, you know, hold on to him, uh, protect him, have him on the roster. And, you know, maybe Brian Hoyer is a guy who's inactive on that. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. The one thing I know about Josh McDaniels is he wants to have multiple quarterbacks. And the other thing is, right, I mean, it's, again, it's not likely that they would double dip. But, I mean, it's, it's a possibility. Uh, and I always think back to what Washington did when they went and drafted RG3. Remember they got RG3 number two overall, and then they drafted Kirk Cousins in round four? The only thing that would probably slow that down is the fact that the Raiders have Brian Hoyer. So you'd have to figure out, and they gave him a two-year deal, so they'd have to figure out what to do with him unless they decide just to move on, right? And then there, there could be that scenario as well. So I would say it's very unlikely that they'll double dip, but I wouldn't say it's, it's totally out of the question. Because, again, they have so much draft capital, they could just say, hey, this is an intriguing guy. Let's go get him, and we'll figure out what to do with him later. That's just an approach that I think that they could do. Uh, next up is a text from Raven in SoCal. He said, full disclosure, I'm one of those who want the Raiders to trade up for Richardson. With that being said, should they not be picking at seven for a defensive dog? I think they'd be better suited to give a defensive tackle than a cornerback for the following reasons. As you've stated, a good D-line helps the back end, and a good secondary helps the D-line. However, pressure up. Pressure on the quarterback and stopping the run happen more often in your average game than coverage sacks. So in my opinion, the defensive line has more of an impact. Additionally, an NFL team is more likely to sign a standout defensive lineman to an extension than they are a cornerback. So the team is uh, apt to get more long-term contribution to the franchise for their high draft pick by choosing a D lineman over a cornerback. Uh, hashtag, if not, get a quarterback, get a DT. Hashtag, it starts in the trenches. Hashtag, go Raiders. That's Raven and SoCal. Again, I don't agree. I mean, I, not I agree. I don't disagree with you. Sorry. I don't disagree with you. I just think that you can get premium players at all positions. Like, why? what's wrong with getting the best at all positions, right? No matter what you decide. And again, this goes back. And this is the part that I think everyone misses. This goes back to the Raiders and their draft board. Not my draft board. Not your draft board. Whoever they have rated highest, when they get on the board at seven, is who they should pick. And that's it, right? I mean, when you're looking at the defensive side of things, they don't go with the quarterback. Whoever they have ranked as their highest rated defensive player is who they should pick at the time. It's really that simple. This is not my wishes. This is not my board. This is exactly what the Raiders are trying to do and, and not, not do like the past staff did and the staff before that, where all of a sudden they're reaching for, for players and getting them when they shouldn't get them, when they could have been available somewhere else. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. And if it's a tie or very close, then maybe they say, hey, you know what? The defensive tackle will give the bigger impact, so let's go with him. And I could totally see that. But if it's not close, why would you go and get someone else? That's the only thing I've been saying, and I think a lot of people keep getting it confused, like I'm pounding the table and arguing for a cornerback. I don't care. They need so much help on defense. They need dogs everywhere. Now, if you notice, and you look at all the mock drafts that have been coming up, and not that they're the end-all, be-all, but 99% of them haven't 
have the Raiders taken a cornerback, have him taken with a spoon at seven. I don't even know if he's going to be available at seven. So there's that. But again, if the best player is available as defensive tackle, say Jalen Carter is there and they feel comfortable taking him, go get him. Please go get him. Because that's that that will be the best defensive tackle they've had since Daryl Russell. Go get him. I would be all on board with them going and getting him if he's available and they feel comfortable with him. Me personally, I've said it multiple times. If it was my decision, I wouldn't take him. But that's me. I'm not sitting in that chair. You know, I'm just a I'm just a dude sitting at home knocking out a podcast and talking on the radio. So that's not my call. If they pick him, I know that he's a really good player and he'll really do some big big things on that Raiders defense. Something that's needed. And that's, that, and that's the bottom line. And that's all that matters. So I honestly don't care what position they pick. D-tackle, D-N, or even corner. It doesn't matter. I think it's going to be one of those players or one of those positions if it's not a quarterback at seven. But thank you so much for that text. I appreciate you. Next up, got a call from T3 Raider Facts. He's calling to talk about the draft and what he thinks would be a success for the Raiders coming out of the draft. Here he is, T3 Raider Facts. Hey, Q. This is Tom in the nation's capital, also known as T3 Raider Facts. Listen, John Train said that production and toughness were the two keys toward calling the 2023 draft a success. I say that the only way to determine whether or not this draft will be successful is going to come when the final roster is selected and at least 10 of those players make the squad. It would be great if four or five of those guys could be starters, but one of those will not be, or at least should not be, a quarterback. The Raiders need one to two starters in the linebacking core, one or two starting corners, a starting offensive lineman, maybe two, and potentially a starting tight end, all to come out of the draft. The Raiders already have two young running backs on the roster who are essentially rookies, and a young quarterback needs to be drafted somewhere in the middle. No rookie quarterback is going to start for the Raiders in 2023 unless lightning strikes Legion Stadium. Don't trade back. Get those defensive playmakers early. Start building this team. If you combine 10 rookies with 10 to 15 guys that McDaniels and Ziegler have already brought in, there's your foundation for 2024. The goal is to be competitive in 2023 and then set the table for next year. Don't panic. Roll with Garoppolo, then Hoyer, then a rookie or Garbers if needed. If the scheme is good and the defense is better, seven, eight, or nine wins could be possible. And that's all I'm asking for, Q. Once again, thanks for all that you do, and take care, Raider Nation. T3, thanks for the call. It's good to hear from you. Ten of the players drafted making the squad. That is a lot, brother. (laughs) I don't even know if they're going to select ten players, but that is a lot of making the squad. You know, especially if one of them is not a a quarterback or one of those starters is not a quarterback. He's talking to one to two linebackers, one to two cornerbacks, an offensive lineman, a potential tight end, but four four or five starters. I can see the four or five starters. I just think that ten guys making the roster that are drafted is a little rich. Now, I know that they had six last year drafted, and they all made the roster, right? Every single one of them made the roster. And they even had some undrafted free agents make the roster. So, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's it's kind of difficult to look at, at, you know, 12 potential picks that they have right now and say 10 of them are going to make the roster. But I understand where you're coming from, and it's a good foundation, like you mentioned. Uh, I do think that, you know, you hit it on the spot, though. Uh, a couple linebackers, cornerback, uh, O-line, tight end, you know, I would add in, uh, you know, defensive line for sure. They've got to be addressed in there as well. So we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. But uh, I think the the best part of the call, and, and I think that everyone in Raider Nation could agree that turning this roster over and getting a lot of young talent is needed in a major way, but they've got to get the talent. They've really got to hit on it. So thank you, T3, for that call. Appreciate you. Got text for our time for one more text. We'll get it from Raider Rick from the 805. He says, what if we make a trade with Houston? They, the Texans, received the Raiders' 2023 round two pick and next year's 2024 round one pick and 2024 round four pick. The Raiders will receive 2023 number two pick, keep the 2023 number seven pick. Houston still has a first round pick at 12. Let me know what you think, Q. Raider Rick from the 805 and the B is blunt and and short as possible. I don't think that's enough, Raider Rick. (laughs) I don't think that that's enough. I don't think that the Raiders would be able to keep their number seven overall pick and try to move up to number two just by giving up a first rounder in 2024 and a first rounder in, in, or a fourth rounder in 2024. I don't see that. To move up from seven to two, it'd have to be multiple first round picks, including this year's. So it'd be number seven, it'd be next year's, and then some. You know, they can throw a player in there that might tweak things a little bit. I just don't see, I don't see that being enough right there for them to trade up. Again, I can see them trade swapping seven and two, and then you have a conversation, but not holding on to the number seven overall pick. That's just, like I said, that's just not enough 
uh, Houston would be crazy. Nick Casario would be ran out of town if he made that kind of trade. So uh, there's that. So thank you so much, Raider Rick. Uh, let's go ahead and get one more call in. That was pretty quick. So let's get this final call in from Raider X. He's calling to talk about the quarterback position or, more importantly, the backup quarterback position. Here he is, Raider X. Hey, Q, Raider X. Just wanted to get a little bit more in-depth conversation about uh, the quarterback position going into the draft or going into this whole off season. You know, um, Brian Oyer is not the backup uh, solution or uh, inspiring solution going into the season, and neither is Chase Garbers. Uh, I know uh, Oyer is going to be a good coach and he's going to be serviceable and teach all this. What does that say? Does that say that uh, the Raider management or staff is looking at Garbers as uh, this guy that they want to want to get or to keep and to mentor up? Or is it saying that the Raiders are going to get a quarterback? Or is it just leaving their options open going into the draft so that they can pick somebody up, either first round, second round, or, or later on, uh, somebody that is can be, you know, groomed for a future quarterback or even a, a, a serviceable, you know, backup? Because, again, with somebody that's likely or doesn't have a very um, solid, you know, um, playing history with, with without injury, as in Jimmy G, there has to be somebody at that number two that at least can get you by. Um, obviously, even a rookie to get in there that can at least sit there and be serviceable. Obviously, you know, that situation where, as you saw, uh, even with the 49ers, might, might have been the system, could have been the great defense, but at least there's somebody that actually can carry the torch, per se. Um, I don't feel that that's the situation right now with the Raiders. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you think they're doing, So, or is it just them uh, preparing for the possibility of grabbing themselves um, a future quarterback in the draft? All right, I'd like to hear your thoughts. The Raider X out. Thanks so much for the call, my man. And, look, I think Hoyer's there because they definitely want him there. They gave him a multi-year deal. Garbers is an emergency quarterback probably a practice squad guy. Uh, I think they're going to try to maybe develop him a little bit. He was an undrafted free agent coming out of Cal. Um, you know, and I, again, I think that they're still in play for a quarterback early, but having Jimmy G kind of puts them in position where they don't have to force the issue and just go grab a guy because they don't have a guy like the Colts, in my opinion, have to grab a guy. They have to get a quarterback, right? The Raiders don't have to get a quarterback at seven. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And Hoyer, I think could be a decent backup. Is he going to win you a bunch of games? No, not at all. I'm not going to ever say that. Um, but I, I don't think he's just going to, as soon as he enters the game, it's like, you know, it's a done deal. He, he knows the system. He's a longtime vet. Uh, he's a coach on the, on the field, as you mentioned. Again, he's not something to get fired up about, but he's not going to, you know, he's not going to just cost you a bunch of games because he's in the, in the action. So uh, I do think quarterback will be addressed in the draft at some point. The question is when. Right. Do they take the approach we talked about in segment number two? Do they trade up and try to go get a guy? Do they trade back and hope to get a guy? You know, I mean, there's five guys that really are talked about in round one with Hendon Hooker being number five. Who knows where he goes? You know, maybe the Raiders get a, the best defensive player at number seven. Then they trade back up into the back end of round one and get Hendon Hooker. Maybe that's, you know, the strategy that they take. I don't know. Right. And that's the beauty of it. That's why we just have to wait and see how it all shakes out. It's nine days away. So we'll know sooner rather than later. But thank you so much for that call. I appreciate you. It's always good to hear from you. So that's all I got for you for today's show. Uh, another one in the books. Another day closer to the NFL draft, uh, uh, April 27th from Kansas City. Excited about that. That'll be round one, of course. Uh, round two and three will be on the 28th. And then the rest of the draft will be closed out on Saturday the 29th. So until uh, tomorrow, Raider Nation, we'll have more calls and texts. We'll have more news and notes and plenty of conversation as well. And you know it's going to be a surrounding the draft. So until then, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.